Boy, I tell you, <laughs> sometimes, sometimes life uh, works out in weird ways. Because uh, I was taking notes on the uh, Russia's Su-25 uh, Foxfoot uh, fighter, and uh, it rained down hell on uh, Ukraine today. Because uh, they they haven't used uh, these uh, these munitions before, because uh, they're expensive and. Um, well, I mean, I guess Russia's shaping the battlefield, and, and like I said, the, the predicted date uh, is uh, the 21st, uh, we'll see. Uh, of course, the anniversary coming up is uh, uh, February 24th, but this is, uh, this is a, a video of the plane. <laughs> I just happened to come across it. Holy moly, what talk about luck, I was because I was going to make the video earlier today, and I've just kind of been like okay i just don't have that much news to report on but let's keep going let's check it out that's what it looks like in all its glory and it rained hell down on ukraine today they hit them hard There you go. Hell, this might have been a uh, video from today. Okay, so let's get into um, a little bit of news here. Uh, well, I, I guess I'll hit the personal note here first. I'll just start at the first of my notes. A uh, buddy of mine called me and he says, uh, he said, man, that cybersecurity guy, he says, you are never, ever going to work for the federal government or corporation ever again with your reporting that you're doing on your channel. He says, uh, you know, you're untouchable. I said, well, you're probably right. I said, I just want to tell the truth and, uh, uh, and do the right thing. That's all I'm all about. So I don't make no money off of this. Uh, who knows? I'll probably end up in jail. Um, and I, you know, and I, then I pointed. I was joking with him. I said, "Well, you know, maybe Russia will hire me." <laughs> you know, because they're going to be the big winners in this whole uh, uh, event. Uh, you know, maybe I, me and uh, Edward Snowden can uh, dance around the uh, the Moscow and, uh, and and hang out. You know, I, I would love to meet him. God dang, I thought he did a wonderful thing for the United States. Uh, so. Um, I, and by the way, this was a quote because uh, uh, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm changing my uh, tune here that it's now the eco bio uh, warmongering terrorist Democrats. That's that's the new uh, uh, motto of my channel, the eco bio warmongering Democrat terrorists. Uh, that's what they are. So let's just keep going. Um, so uh, and then I, I, there was a quote and, and Obama said, never underestimate Biden's ability to f things up <laughs> i remember the way he said that holy moly uh the numbers uh it's been confirmed uh, back and forth through various sources uh we've got uh, fourteen thousand uh dead russians uh, we're going to get into the special military operation numbers i didn't quote on that yesterday um this is uh uh, Russian supposedly dis dismantling uh, weapons of mass destruction. I won't show you that. Uh, I wanted to get down to, uh, uh, let's see, that was, uh, let's see. Well, this was, this was interesting. Uh, well, I, okay, let's just watch it. Let's see, what is, oh, this was an interesting uh, video. It's only a minute and nine seconds, and, uh, and this was way back. Look how young Putin is in this video. I thought this was pretty cool. This, is, this was his comments way back way back, uh, before the war, before everything, but this is what he had to say. Вот когда советские войска вместе с нашими союзниками во Второй мировой войне, с британцами, с американцами, с другими европейцами освобождали города Германии от нацизма, то мирное население страдало. Сегодня немецкий народ вместе со всем цивилизованным миром отмечает 8 мая как день победы над нацизмом и над фашизмом, как свой собственный день победы. 
В конечном итоге все поняли, что эти страдания были направлены на то, чтобы освободить сам немецкий народ. Мы освобождаем чеченский народ от этой заразы и исходим из того, что мы обязаны это сделать в интересах самого чеченского народа и других народов Российской Федерации. Мы постоянно подчеркивали и подчеркиваем, все наши действия направлены на то, чтобы минимизировать эти потери. На самом деле никаких крупных потерь среди мирного населения не было и нет. All right, so uh, I was going through my notes, of course, while that video was playing. Um, so I, the Su-25, um, I, I, to me, because I worked on the, the A-10 Warthog during the uh, during the war and uh, part of my military career, uh, that's kind of the Russian equivalent of the A-10 Warthog. It's a it's a close ground support aircraft uh, and of course the the notes that i took was russia attacked nine regions across ukraine in the last 24 hours now what does that indicate to you what does that indicate to you that means that all of these missile strikes that they've been doing i think they've pretty much knocked out most of ukrainians air defenses because uh, they're feeling like they can bring in these expensive aircraft now and start bombing the shit out of ukraine just like we did uh, to Iraq, just like we did to Libya, just like we did to Syria, uh, you know, you name it, The uh, just like we did to Afghanistan. You know, when you don't have uh, air defenses to fly over, yeah, you can uh, send your planes in and do what the hell you want. Well, I think Russia's feeling right now their oats, and, uh, and so they're sending in their close ground support aircraft, which uh, I'm telling you, this spells the end of doom to Ukraine. If, if they're bringing in their A-10 Warthogs or the Su-25, uh, I think we got a whole different war on our hands. I, I can't imagine uh, that things aren't going to uh, progress rapidly from here. Um, so let's get to uh, just another video. I thought this uh, this is 5 minutes, 50, uh, 58 seconds. Um, and, you know, I, it, this is very well summers up, sum, summarizes uh, how I feel about the United States. We're out of control. You know, we need to put an end to this thing and, and quit killing uh, Ukrainians. What is the story that people in the West and around the world should understand about what's happening right now with these conflicts with Russia, with Russia and Ukraine and with China? The main point, Amy, is that we are not using diplomacy. We are using weaponry. Uh, this uh, sale now announced to Taiwan that you've been discussing this morning is just another case in point. This does not make Taiwan safer. This does not make the world safer. It certainly doesn't make the United States safer. This goes back uh, a long way. I think it's useful to start 30 years ago. The Soviet Union ended and some American leaders got it into their head that there was now what they called the unipolar world, that the U.S. was the sole superpower and we could run the show. The results have been disastrous. We have had now three decades of militarization of American foreign policy. By the way, he was a, a, new he's a diplomat. Tufts is maintaining. I can't tell you under what there administration. Have been more than 100 military interventions by the United States. Can you States imagine that? 100 military since 1991. It's uh, really unbelievable. We're like the most warmongering and nation, though, of course, under the Democrats, mostly. Over the, last the warmongering years, Democrats, the bioterrorist, eco terrorist, warmongering Democrats. Europe, in China, yeah, there you and go. In other parts of the world how the U.S. approach is a military first and often a military only approach. We arm who we want. We call for NATO enlargement no matter what other countries say. Yeah, we Maybe brought all the NATO countries right up interest. next to Russia's border. We brush aside. And we were going to bring uh, Ukraine in after we armed them for, and, since 2014. Uh, we ship more until Russia said enough is enough. Allies in that region. We go to war when we want, yep. where we want, whether it was Afghanistan or Iraq or the covert war against Assad in Syria, Still which going is on. even today not properly understood by the American people. Yeah, the American people are completely the war in ignorant. Libya, 
and we say we're peace loving. What's wrong with Russia and China? Well, they it was a war among the Democrats to undermine the world. And we end up in terrible confrontations. The war in Ukraine, just to finish the, the uh, introductory uh, view. I can't believe that democracy now actually put this on. It should have been avoided through diplomacy. Yeah, we could have ended this back what in March. President Putin of Russia was saying for years was do not expand NATO into the Black Sea. Yeah, well, now we not got Finland Ukraine, and uh, much less Sweden. They, to they want to join NATO. People look on the map. I don't know. I think after this war, the they might <laughs> they might reconsider the things, sea. right? Russia said, this will surround us. This will jeopardize our security. Let us have diplomacy. The United States rejected all diplomacy. Yeah, right now, and then nobody's talking to anybody. The World White War House III. At the end of 2021, in fact, I did contact the White House and said, there will be war unless the U.S. enters diplomatic talks with President Putin. Oh, and the warmonger Democrats said, hell no, hell no, we want Putin out, man, that, that son of a bitch should that take a gun and shoot himself in the and head. It was off the table. Now we have a war that's extraordinarily dangerous, and we are yeah. taking exactly the same tactics in East Asia that led to the war in Ukraine. We're yeah, organizing yeah. alliances, yeah, against China. Weaponry, Why do you think uh, China and uh, Russia are teaming up, and India? China. I mean, we, we're going to take on 80% of the world, baby. Pelosi, <laughs> the United Taiwan, States. The yeah, the warmonger and Democrat, uh, bioterrorist, the eco-terrorist. The They're going to take no, on 80% of the world. Want. Oh, my and God. I tell you, God save us. I, I hope that he can. Um, yet I don't I don't understand war. where these uh, warmonger Democrats are coming from. It's terrifying. It is terrifying. We are at the 60th anniversary of the Cuban Missile Crisis. I didn't know that. I studied all my life. And I've written about, I've written a book about the aftermath. We are driving to the precipice, and we are uh, filled. With yeah, our, yeah. The American people—they're uh, all pumped up. You know, you do your so peacock well. thing. It's you know, get out there and ruffle your feathers. Uh, yeah. Dangerous and uh, wrong-headed. The whole approach of uh, U.S. foreign policy and its bipartisan. All right. So that's that one. Uh, let's get back to the news. Um, uh, so we'll go in. Uh, by the way, I received a comment. Um, he said that Sunak, the, the uh, British prime minister, his wife is Indian. But reports are uh, that she's still in Russia. So I guess I was right and wrong. I always report where I might have reported things incorrectly. I, I, I haven't checked on the validity of the comment or the fact uh, what his nationality of his wife is, but I, I do appreciate the correction if that's true. Uh, let's see. Uh, da, 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 Russia has been shaping the battlefield. Uh, no, no. Yeah, yeah, you know, and of course, you know, the Minsk agreement, they, they said it again. I mean, Ursula, and by the way, this is what the Duran calls her. Ursula Vandercrazy <laughs> admitted again that the West... Uh, Way back in December of 2021, uh, deceived the Russians into uh, helping us uh, continue to arm um, Ukraine. And she was bragging about the fact that the Russians were so stupid that, uh, that they, they allowed us to use that agreement to continue to arm the uh, Ukrainian military. I tell you, these Western leaders, uh, either they're incredibly stupid or they're just arrogant as hell. It just blows my mind. Uh, you know, one thing I did uh, want to point out. Uh, was, you know, Russia has never been defeated. Uh, they've been beat down, and certainly uh, the Soviet Union, but I mean, you know, you look back in history, Napoleon, Hitler, uh, you know, uh, every every nation <laughs> has tried to beat the Russians. And I tell you what, they are one tough bunch of people. They, they are going to win this war, and there's no stopping it, unless nuclear weapons, well, then the whole world's over. So, um, by the way, the Seymour Hersh uh, 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 story about the uh, blowing up, uh, the eco-terrorist uh, Democrats blowing up the uh, uh, Nord Stream pipeline um, is, is going around the world. Uh, it's really getting worldwide attention. I'm, I'm pretty impressed. Everywhere I look, uh, everybody's talking about it except uh, your mainstream media here in the United States. Uh, there was uh, Russell Brand. Uh, uh, he gets a, what, couple million people that watch it. He did an interview. I watched the whole interview. It was very impressive. If you want to watch him, he's on Rumble. Um, it was a good interview. I enjoyed it. Uh, 
and uh, and they 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 were actually uh, pretty pretty civil. I, you know, you could tell that uh, Russell Brand, you know, he wasn't a huge fan of uh, Seymour, but uh, I don't know. They they got along well. It was a it was a good interview. I just wanted to throw that out. Uh, by the way, we cannot allow this neocon idiot Nikki Haley to become president of the United States. Listen to this. She is a neocon warmongering. Well, supposedly Republican. I would say she's in the Uniparty. This this is horrible. We cannot allow this woman to. I mean, I, I hope that she goes down in the primaries by a huge amount. And anybody that says, "Oh, I hated Trump's mean tweets," you cannot vote for this woman. We have the backs of our friends, and we hold our enemies to account. And you know, whether it's Ukraine or Israel, we take care of them because it's about freedom. And we can never stop fighting for freedom. There is that popular strain, and a lot of MAGA, that wants the Ukraine gravy train, financially and otherwise, to stop. And even there's a growing Republican consent, not consensus, but growing Republican support to say, wait a minute, checks and balances here. What are we doing giving all this money to Ukraine? Where do you come down on the money, on, on the military? Oh, you know, we got homeless here in the United States. Biden we got people starving to, to death. Take- he yeah, should have given yeah. Ukraine what they needed. Yeah, we need to give more billions of dollars. We'd be in a totally different we need to country. send every weapon system this in the United States to Ukraine. This is yes. a war about freedom. Yeah, it's a war about freedom. And what I about U.S. freedom? The troops on the ground. I don't think what about all them homeless the people tracks. in California? They have the oh, we got to give everything to Ukraine. Give them the Hell, give them nuclear get weapons, them man. Yeah, yeah. And say, yeah. Hey, we're not the only ones. You've got to do it too. Yeah, yeah. And oh, yeah, and what, let's uh, definitely fight. blow up the Nord no, Stream pipeline and course Europe into giving more weapons to Ukraine. You won't hear anything. We have to do everything we can while we starve the American people to death. Russia's not going to stop at Ukraine. They're going to go into. Poland oh yeah, and they're going to. They're going to. They're going to. They're, they're, they're going to. They're going to take we over the whole world. Sure They'll probably invade Australia. But if you, well, I, I guess they're going to march next into China, huh? And you don't want to do oh yeah, that. And, yeah. And that therefore is America first. And oh that's, my god! It is god. taking care of America because we're. That's taking care of America. Yeah, let's let's give all our money, our weapons, everything to Ukraine, uh, while people starve to death here in the United States. What a, oh my. God, if you vote for that woman, I, I, I'm, I'm going to tell you, I, I, I'd punch you right in the nose. All right, so let's get back to the news. Um, let's see. Uh, uh, well, uh, you know, of course, if you're watching anything, uh, the encirclement of Bakhmut continues. Uh, they made some advancements there, um, you know, uh, so that that's nothing that everybody doesn't know. I want to give you some positive information. Uh, Linda Culver. She took District 27 in a special general election. Uh, And what was interesting about this was that the Republicans finally employed uh, ballot harvesting to make that happen. Uh, Now, that's kind of a Republican district, but uh, she won by, whoo, it was a huge margin because of the ballot harvesting. So I think the Republicans have learned their lesson to play the Democrat game the way... uh, the way it's meant to be played, I, I think this is in Pennsylvania, who elected a zombie and a dead man. So, you know, this this would be huge. This means that we've learned how to harvest ballots in uh, Pennsylvania. So that would be a wonderful thing. Uh, you know, you got to fight the Democrats at their own game here. Um, so, and then, yeah, and the Republicans won uh, mail-in ballots. Uh, that, that, that's, that, that was the significant thing about this, was that when they counted the mail-in ballots, the Republicans actually had more votes than the democrats and that's a first because you know republicans think that they have to go to the in these you know these states like pennsylvania or arizona or you know where they everything's corrupt you know they 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 think that they have to go to the uh the the ballot or, or to the their their voting uh, districts as we saw in arizona where they <laughs> all the machines wouldn't work that day because uh, they were counting on you know go to, robbing the republicans of their ability to um cast uh, their ballots uh, and it, well it, it, a lot of shenanigans took place there let's just say uh, who knows where that'll go um oh yeah this was an well let's get to the next video i guess i've talked enough here um this this is very interesting i told you that the um the infrastructure of the united states being destroyed i just keep showing you these videos after video after video 
Here are a couple more videos of that fire that we were flying over this morning in Chicago Heights. So is that a manufacturing facility at 11th and Washington? And just look at all of that smoke coming from that area. Um, thankfully, hearing no injuries involved in this fire, but crews are still on the scene. And take a look at this. This is the view as we were approaching about 15 miles away. All right, so we'll get to the last of uh, the news here. Um... There was a uh, there was a huge video about uh, in Australia, and uh, and boy, I tell you, th th there was a seven year old that died, and the person and I couldn't you know obviously on YouTube I can't speculate as to why this seven year old died, but what was crazy was in the session uh, all the Australian uh, uh, legislatures kept going no cut shut the video off we don't want to record this we don't want to record this. And, uh, and so, so they blocked it. Uh, so we don't know anything about the death of this seven-year-old because they didn't want anybody to know anything. Isn't that interesting? I, I'm just saying, just saying. Uh, well, this was interesting news today. The YouTube CEO uh, has resigned. I wonder what that's about. I don't know. Uh, you tell me. I'm, I would like to think that maybe it's about the censorship and uh, maybe the next person coming in might... Uh, uh, open things up a little bit, but I doubt it. It's probably going to be worse. Uh, we'll see. Uh, let's uh, let's get the next video. Uh, I'm not sure if I got another one that I want to show. Oh, yeah, uh, no change. And yeah, this is crazy. I tell you, these these, these Western lunatics. We have sent a very clear message. We want to join together with Sweden at the same time. It's not only because we are good neighbors and Where good do these partners. people come from? It's all also to do with very... Uh, I mean, she's kind of good looking, but, uh, the you know... The planning of NATO in the whole North. It's in interest of us, I mean, but it's also in the interest of... Don't they know Russia's uh, winning the, the war, you know? <laughs> and we I don't know. It just uh, it blows my mind. clear message uh, to Turkey and also to Hungary that hasn't ratified yet that we want enter NATO together, and this is in the interest of everyone. Mm -hmm. So mm. no change then, even if some country No, no change. Of course, we cannot influence and affect how some country would ratify. It's their decision. But our uh, message is that we are... Yeah, we uh, want to join NATO, to join, and, and we, we got the fight. And want to join together. Russia. Yeah, there you go. That's, uh, more, more countries want to fight Russia. Um... Uh, this was interesting. Boy, I tell you, South Korea, I, I, how in the world, uh, well, by, by the way, this was a George Soros note. You know, I didn't realize that son of a bitch is 92 years old. I mean, he looks like Palatine. I mean, I guess when you're completely evil, you live forever. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, why in the hell does he even inject himself into politics? If I was 92 years old, I'd be hanging out with my grandkids, uh, uh, drinking pina colada as a, as a billionaire on the, the shores of, uh, uh, in the Bahamas, uh, and just enjoying myself. But no, he, he called uh, today for a regime change in India. And of course, they, uh, they fired back on him. But I mean, he, he just feels like he's got to be involved in all the world politics. And I, 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 he's one evil son of a bitch, man. I, I don't even, I, what the hell, 92 years old. I mean, just, just go, go someplace, George. I mean, you know, you don't need to, to inject yourself into the world no more. <laughs> it's ridiculous what you are. Oh, my God. All right, so let's, uh, let's get the South Korean foreign minister, and then we'll end the video right here. Russia's armed attack on Ukraine and the global attention on the war in Europe are, uh, as, as we witness, uh, emboldening the Kim Jong-un regime in North Korea through the precipitation of aggressive missile launches, including the ICBMs. And today, it resumed ballistic missile testing, probably an ICBM, mm -hmm. after a break lasting almost 50 days clearly signaling its intent to conduct additional uh, provocations. And going further, if North Korea conducts the seventh nuclear test, which could happen at any time, it will be a game changer in a sense that North Korea could develop and deploy tactical nuclear missiles. 
So anyway, North Korea has uh, expanded their uh, nuclear production immensely uh, since, since the warmongering Democrats took power. Uh, and uh, now they have, have basically said they have the capability to destroy the United States. I, I tend to believe that. So if, uh, if we take any action against them. Um, the other uh, interesting piece of news was Netherlands. Uh, they expelled the Russian diplomats today. So watching the world burn, baby, watching the world burn. Peace out, stay free, and uh, it's good, good, good to live in the free, free, free Republican state of Florida under the great leadership of Governor DeSanctimonious.